Welcome to Crypt After Dark. I'm your host, Jacob Perry. And today, Bitcoin took a massive dump on everyone. I mean, it, it has gone down, right? It's gone down like 50%, right? That's what I heard. That's the rumor. I heard that the Bitcoin bull run is over. But it ain't, okay? I'm totally kidding. No, everyone's freaking out over just a little bit of drop. Remember, remember the previous cycles. Bitcoin has dropped like 20%, okay? This is nothing new. In fact, we're, we still haven't even six, hit $60,000 yet. Okay, stop freaking out. Chill. First of all, there's your chill pill. Take it with a little bit of water. Okay, I had my water earlier today. Take your chill pill with some water. It's going to be nice. Okay. Secondly, the government, everyone's talking about the stuff with uh, with Tether, having the dollar actually backed by gold. Let me tell you something. That will probably happen later in the future for the American dollar. Let me bring this microphone closer. Okay. Um, that will probably happen later on uh, down the road for the American dollar. It being backed by gold. That's the rumor. That's what I hear from all the rich people that I know of. Um, and what else? Uh, we, we've talked about that. We've seen the deep fakes with um, Joe Biden and deep fakes, right? Um, we've seen it all today. What else is new? What are we looking at? Well, let's go ahead and look at the market. This is why you come to Crypt After Dark, your late night crypto show. This is what we talked about. Let's look at everything. What do we got going on? Okay, we do have the uh, the current market cap. Oh, man, I really need to fix this, don't I? Um, let me see if I can fix this really fast before we start going in here. There we go. Let me zoom in a, just a little bit so you guys can see. All right, here we go. We do have the total market cap coming in at $2.4 trillion and $94 billion in volume. Not very much at all. We do have the trending coins. I was actually thinking about this just a few days ago. How is there not a beer coin? And yet there is a beer coin and it is down. 37 and a half percent is not a good time to own beer coin. However, if you own Enrich, well, you are rich because you, my friend, just got a, what is that, a 9X? Yeah, you just got a 9X. So congratulations on everyone who has Enrich. And uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this cryptocurrency's name because you were up 130%. You have doubled your money plus 30%. All right, Bitcoin's coming in at a measly $65,000. <laughs> Remember, $69,000 in the last market was like its peak. And now everyone's freaking out over 65K. Big whoop. Okay. Um, Ethereum coming in at $3,400. BNB coming in at $595. Solana, $139. Uh, XRP, $0.49. Cents. Toncoin, $745. Dogecoin, uh, $0.12. Cents. We have Cardano at $0.39. Cents, okay. Listen, if you're not buying Cardano, okay, let me rephrase this. If you have the money to buy Cardano at 39 cents, load up, baby. Load up on your Cardano. If you can buy the dip, if you didn't already get in and put all your bag in, like a lot of us out there, go ahead and load up, okay? Load up on the Cardano. It's it's going to be rare coming in later in, in, in my opinion, okay? Later on this year and the beginning of next year, I'll be surprised if you ever see Cardano at 39 cents for those time frames. Okay. Now it may hit 39 cents again in the next bear run. Okay. But in, for this bull run, you're, you're looking at a rare opportunity. Okay. For 39 cent Cardano, a really rare opportunity. Uh, what else do we got going on? Uh, let's see. Uh, Shiba Inu coming in at 1861. Avalanche, $27.65. Everything is down, guys. Every, every, it's a bloodbath out there. Yeah, things are down 20 20 20%, 15%, 11%, 23% for ICP. Jeez, uh, what's what's render at? $7.39 down 14%. Where's our boy Optimus? I'm sure he's bleeding. Yeah, 14% almost 15% down to $1.86, guys. It is a great time to buy Optimism at $1.86 because in order for it to just 10x, if like in order for it to 10x, Optimism's market, cap, what am I trying to say? In order for optimism to 10x, its market capitalization, which is right here, needs to go over 10 times. In other words, it needs to be at a $20 billion market capitalization, which would put it at approximately, if it did that, it would kind of be as big as, what, Toncoin right now. But later on in the bull market, Toncoin is going to be huge, and optimism is also going to be bigger. So we're looking at somewhere between Toncoin and XRP. Now, that's when the bull run really kicks off. That's when we're going to see a $20 billion market capitalization. That's going to be really nice. In case you don't in case you don't know and you're new to crypto, you need to understand, in case you're new to investing, period, not just crypto, this is everything. Whenever you see uh, market capitalization, this is how much money needs to be injected into the system, okay? Or injected into your commodity, whether it's your gold, silver, crypto, whatever, 
in order for your money to double. That, that's what needs to happen. The market capitalization of the asset needs to increase by two in order to double your money. It needs to increase by three or 10 in this case for it needs to go to $20 billion in order for me to 10 X my money in order for me to get my money over tenfold. So if I put a thousand dollars in and it goes up to a $20 billion market capitalization, I will have $10,000. If I put in $10,000 and it goes up to a $20 billion market capitalization, I get $100,000. Very easy to do in a bull run, especially if you pick winners. And I do think optimism is a winner for at least a 10x, okay? You're not, I don't think you're going to get a 40. I don't think you're going to get a 20. I'm, maybe a six. Okay, that's kind of bearish in my opinion. I think a good 10x is good. And shoot, even if you have um, a 6x from where it's at, that would put it at a... Um, a $12 billion market capitalization, which would just put it kind of as big right now as, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, Shiba Inu, okay? Not even in the top 10. It would be just as big as Shiba Inu is about right now, okay? Maybe just a smudge bigger, less than Cardano, just a little bit bigger than Shiba. That's what we're looking at. I think we can hit that with optimism. And honestly, I'm just looking to get a 10X out of this next bull run. And I promise you, I will be set. I will be set for life. <laughs> um, so just to let you guys know that I'm very excited uh, for everything. So guys, let's let's welcome to the market. It's it's been it's been a wild day for a lot of people. Uh, I told you guys last week this was going to happen. If you've been watching Crypto After Dark for a while, you know that I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. We have finally printed a red dot on the weekly time frame. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Let's go ahead. Let's look at the weekly. Not not the weekly yet, but we will. <laughs> we will. I promise. Let's go ahead. Let's look at the charts. Let's let's see what's going on in the crypto world. But before we do that, let's check out the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index. It's at 74. We are still in the greed. We are in the green. Now's a good time to sell. People have been selling. People are taking profits. And there is one thing that... Um, I'm going to go and flip that over. Oh, by the way, do y'all like this shirt? I got this shirt for Father's Day. Post Tenebrous Lux, okay? And if you don't know what this means, it is a, a motto for the Reformation, meaning after darkness, light. After darkness, light. Uh, so I did get this banger of a shirt. Oh, there we go. Ha ha. Yeah. I got this banger of a shirt from my wife today for Father's Day. Super excited about that. And if you are a father and know if you're a woman who tr who's trying to be a man through surgeries and cutting your hair short, no, that doesn't count. Okay. If you are a father, okay, with the correct chromosomes and children, and you take care of those children, okay, if you take care of them, like you, you don't commit adultery on your wife, you don't like split your family up, no. If you are a good father, okay, if you're a good father, happy Father's Day, okay? We don't like deadbeats on this show, plain and simple. Uh, if you have destroyed your family, we don't like you, just being real. Unless, you, unless, of course, you have repented. If you have repented and tried to make amends and done everything in your power, you've repented, and now you're living for Jesus, we love you on this show. Until then, you're a deadbeat dad, and I'm not saying happy Father's Day to you. Now, to everyone who else, Hope you had a great Father's Day. If you're if you're a dad and you had and you take care of your family, you love your children, you don't beat them or any crazy thing, you didn't destroy your family through some adulterous relationship or through some drugs or whatever else kind of crazy stuff. Uh, if you didn't drop your wife off at Planned Parenthood, which we're gonna look at that by the way, we will look at that. Um, uh, congratulations to you. Happy Father's Day. I hope you have plenty and more children. And now let's let's go ahead. All right, that's enough of that. You know on this channel, hey, we, we are based on this channel. We don't apologize. That's that's for dang sure. Unless, of course, we think we should. Let's go ahead. Let's look at Bitcoin. This is uh, Market Cypher B. Let's look at this. Man, oh, man. Okay. So it is looking a bit sketch. I'm not going to lie, guys. Okay. Now, I do know that I, I keep saying we're coming down here to $60,000, and I firmly believe that. This, uh, what, what the heck is this? We need to fix this. We need to fix this to go straight and right there. There we go. Actually, I don't even know if that's straight. Ah, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, all right. Here, here's where things are getting a little dicey, okay? Th things are getting real dicey for me because I know patterns, and this is what we call an M pattern, or in modern vernacular, a double top, okay? It, it is topped out right here. So it's a double top, and we could come back down here to approximately 51,000. That's very, very, very real. And what what uh, what drawback would that be at? If we just left where we are now, we came down to fifty thousand. That's a twenty percent correction. That's a big correction, guys. 
but it's not the end of the world. Bitcoin's done twenty percent corrections forever. It, go back and look look at the charts. Actually, you know what? Let's uh let's see if I can go back and look at the charts for you. If I can even remember a time when uh Bitcoin actually corrected twenty percent. Let's go back over here. Uh, we should easily find this in in this bull run. Let's see. Uh, what was this one? This looks like a 20% correction. It might even be a 50%. Oh man, that first dip or that second dip off right here in, uh, in February of the last bull run, it dipped down 26%, okay? Uh, wh what about this one right here? It dipped down 20, no, 30% correction, okay? What about, uh, what about another one? What about this one right here? It dipped down 18%, okay? What about another one? What about this one right here? Whoo, that's a, that's a big one. Uh, twenty seven percent. So not as big as this one though. That was weird. Uh, what else can we look at? Let's look at uh, sell a May walk away. We all remember this. That was rough. Sheesh. That was a fifty percent correction. Okay, from here to here, all the way back in what was that? July, I believe it was, um, or August. I have it print. Oh wait, right here. Uh, July right here. Yeah, it went went all the way down. Man, that was a scary time. Back down to 29,000, okay? It went from, what was that? 64 to 29. That, that was a big correction, okay? What else do we have? We have another one right here, down here. What is that? Oh, nuts. Let me, hang on. That was terrible. From here to here, right here, we got a 23% correction. Guys, look. You find them all over the place, and of course, whenever we hit that, whenever we hit the uh, the actual bear market, uh, <clears throat> we did come all the way down what fifty something percent, approximately right there. Yeah, about fifty three percent. So, guys, this is nothing new. Like, like we we there's nothing new here. Okay, there's nothing new, except for this little double top. Now, I am thinking that this is a bit of a fractal. I'm not going to lie. It kind of gives me. This little vibe over here, what we have going on looks like a fractal. Just saying, it looks like we got some Wyckoff, some distribution, a double top, and we should be coming back down. So I think we come back down maybe just under 60,000. I definitely don't think we're going to be at um, at uh, $52,000. I don't think that at all. But I do anticipate this fractal to kind of play out. I'm just being honest. So we were anticipating an $80,000 in June around July, yet will things change? That's what happens. We look at patterns. We say, if this pattern plays out, then this, everything's looking great. And then things can turn at the drop of a dime because big money is in the space, okay? It's not like we were wrong. It's just that you just have to constantly change your opinion based on the new data and where the big money is moving. And I'm telling you, this looks like, geez, um, let, let me see if I could just draw this for you guys. Are you guys actually even able to see this? I hope you're able to see, oh, thank heavens. Um, what in the, hang on, there we go, hang on, there we go, okay, that should be better for you guys, um, so let me go ahead and draw this, so this right here would be this right here, okay, and this right here would be this right here, and now that you guys can see that, go ahead and get rid of it so that we can see, and then this right here, would be this right here. Now, fractals are not, they, they never play out perfectly, okay? That's not a thing. Fractals are kind of like, it's very, very, very similar to where it's matching the same pattern. That's a fractal to me, guys. It is what it is. It's not fun, but it is what it is. Uh, so, however, we do need to look at the weekly time frame because things are slightly, I would say slightly bit different on the weekly time frame, which is a very powerful time frame to, oh, I thought I just got rid of that which is a very powerful time frame to, that we need to look at. And right now it has made a, a cup and handle pattern, which I do have to play out around $116,000. Now, will it play out? That is, the, that is the question here. Will it play out? Now, I know a lot of people came over here. They said, well, uh, I don't know. We have a cup and handle pattern here with a cup, but that's not really a cup and handle pattern, guys. I'm just being honest. That's not a cup and handle pattern by any stretch of the imagination. But what we have here is a cup and handle pattern now if you don't know anything oh that was terrible if you don't know anything about technical analysis i will help you really fast it took me a long time to do technical analysis about a year and a half i dedicate a lot of time to it to learn things 
to learn patterns because really technical analysis is just a study of patterns. And that's about it. And right here is called a cup and handle pattern. And there's your little handle. And this is really nice, guys. This is a very bullish pattern. What does bullish mean? Bullish means number go up. Okay. What does bearish mean? Bearish means number go down. There you go. So this is bullish. This means number go up. This is a number go up type pattern. That's what this means. This is really exciting. This is super exciting. And if it plays out, we do have a potential Bitcoin target price of $116,000. $116,000. Um, sorry, I just heard Michael Scott in my head whenever I said that. So I had to say that. So that, that's what we have on the, on the weekly time frame. I'm super excited. It looks like Bitcoin for the long run is looking super, super, super juicy. I used to be kind of a, um, a, a Bitcoin guy that said, I don't really think Bitcoin's going to play out over $100,000, but now I actually do because of this pattern. That could change. Okay, that could change. Now, uh, let's look at Market Cypher B on the weekly time frame. Uh, so we did print a red dot, okay? Things have started going down. How far down will they go? Well, if Bitcoin decides to range sideways, then this market cipher B here will continue to go down. The momentum will go down, but we did peak out with momentum again around here, February 20, the week of February 26th. And the VWAP has been going down since, uh, what day is this? June 10th, since June 10th. So what is this? Uh, geez, this is, oh, this is just a week then. Okay. No, is that right? June 10th. Okay. So one week from June 10th to June 17th, we're going down. We did print the red dot last week. Technically, today is when it technically printed. And I do anticipate us coming down here just like this. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this zero line here. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see it just a little bit better. I do anticipate the momentum waves coming down just past the zero line, dipping in like that. And, uh, and let me zoom back in a little bit more, a little bit more. And then the momentum waves kind of like moving more in a in an upwards direction based off the pattern that we've seen here, 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 and now the next one probably is here. And then when, when what am I, British? Once this little dip happens here, uh, I fully anticipate the bull run to be on blast mode. I really do. Like full blown, light up the rocket prope propellers. What are they called? Rocket exhaust. I don't know. We're going to the moon, guys. Okay, we're going to the freaking moon. I'm not. I'm not Elon Musk. I don't know the things about rockets. Okay, though I did see something about. Um, I did see something about a flat Earth thing. And let me. Uh, let me hang on. We're about to go off on a tangent here, but okay, <laughs> we're, we're going off on a tangent. I saw something about a flat Earth today. This is this is the wildest thing I've ever heard, because the guy didn't know what he was talking about. Wild. Okay, so I'm not against anyone believing flat Earth. Okay, not a fan. Not a fan of it myself. I'm not, uh, but I'm not against you. I'm not against your theory. Uh, I understand that there's mathematical equations and sciences and size uh, proportions and distances that you need to take into account and everything. I, I, I get that, okay? But what I heard this guy say was we needed to, um, in order to, uh, like, in order to go to the moon, uh, we need to be traveling around, what was it, 11 kilometers per second, which is about six to seven miles a second, Okay. And his math was off, okay? His, his math was off because when you actually stand and you look at the ocean line where you see the sky meeting the, the horizon of the ocean, it's actually about six miles, but it can vary depending on how tall you are. Uh, but if you look at that, you need to be going from your standpoint to that horizon line in a, in one second, okay? That's how fast you need to go to escape um, the, um, uh, the Earth's gravitational orbit. And so there's no possible way that we made it to the moon, now, if you're a keen listener, you understood exactly what I just said and why what he said doesn't make sense. Because in order to leave the Earth's gravitational orbit to get to the moon, that sentence is nonsensical. You want to know why? Because the moon is in the Earth's gravitational orbit. <laughs> There's a reason why it doesn't leave us. It's because it's connected to us in our gravitational orbit. Anyways, wild. But if he was correct, then yeah, no one's gone to the moon. Okay, no one. Because you need to be traveling at like, what, 15, 16,000 miles an hour in order to travel six to six or seven miles a second, something like that. But he didn't. Okay, like that doesn't happen. Okay, in order to escape Earth's gravitational orbit, 
you don't really need to go that fast. You, like, or in order to get to the moon, you need to go like 3000 ish miles an hour. Okay. Give or take a couple hundred miles, but in order to escape earth's gravitational orbit, like, yeah, you got to go really, really, really fast, but not to get to the moon. Anyways, guys, back to, back to this. Uh, the earth is round. The earth is a globe. Uh, the globe is round. Uh, all right. What else do we need to be looking at? Oh, so on the daily time frame, now, now that I completely made you forget exactly what we're looking at. By the way, this, let me show you guys this. Every time you see the three hills of death, okay, that's what I call it, or the head and shoulders pattern. We saw it here, 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 here. We've been making these patterns. So look, look at this. I anticipate us with this pattern to do the exact same thing as this. We made a three hills of death. We came down. I told you guys last year, before I even started doing the show, I told you guys last year, Drew was there. Drew remembers. I hope he remembers. But the receipts were there. The receipts are there. Uh, we did a, we got a green dot and we came all the way up and all the way up and, and now we're coming down and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay, guys. It's going to be okay. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it is. And of course, uh, we come back over here. We again saw the three hills of death. These were little baby hills, but look, we came over and this was July, August, 2021. Of course, this was the end of the bull run. And so that's kind of how that went down. Then we came over here in November and that was it. It was done and over. We hit the bear market. We were deep into the red for a very long time. And now, guys, we are coming back up. So this is super exciting. We know, look, if you ever see three little humps, three hills of death, three camels back, whatever you want to call it, I call it whatever I want because, well, it's just funnier that way. No one likes to call it a head and shoulders pattern. Um, three hills of death is kind of like a little bit more bearish, kind of tells you number go down because we're talking about death here. Um, so just be aware of that, okay? Now, uh, let's go back to the daily time frame on this uh, because we actually didn't look at market cipher beyond the daily time frame. And I know we got a lot of traders out there um, and we need to be looking at the daily time frame. Let's zoom in here. And this is actually really bullish. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, we're down, but look how far we are down. Uh, we're down almost to the oversold zone. Actually, this is the, the trigger here. Uh, the little dotted line right here is the trigger. Like, oh, trigger probably should start going long. And the oversold zone is right here at what, six, excuse me, 60. So we went from 50, no, 53 to 60. Okay, guys, it's, it's about time to put on some longs. Okay, now we could be going all the way down to 100. Okay, all the way down here to negative 104, guys. We really could. We come way down past this little bar. We can go down as far as this bar can go or to 100 or wherever it is uh, that market side for be a set at, but I don't think we're going to get there, but if we do, it's going to be okay. But I do have good news on the daily time frame. Let's look at this. The VWAP is making an inverse head and shoulders pattern or the three hills of life. We have one here, one here. And just as I suspected, I knew that it had to come back down. I almost said it in, um, in the, uh, oh, what do I call it? Gosh, this is ridiculous. So embarrassing. Um, the, the morning afternoon Bitcoin update. I almost said this. I should have said it. Right here, I said, or I almost said this. It, it'll probably get a retracement today to bring this back down to create an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And by golly, that's exactly what it's doing at the moment. It's coming back down. And I think by uh, Wednesday, we should be going back up. And so be aware of that. I think that we're, we're going to be okay in the short term. Of course, this is always choppy as we head to the downside of $60,000, but hey, that's what they do. Also, look at this money flow, guys. This money flow sucks, okay? And I mean, it sucks. It has been, the money flow has been ranging sideways since June 12th, okay? So from June 12th all the way to June 8th, 17th right now, it's just, it's just been raging sideways. And from right here from may 19th all the way to now it's just kind of been a little choppy and now it's just mega choppy super duper duper choppy and of course it's the money flow has been down i would say considerably since april 19th all the way to right now if you want my opinion so just be aware of that also look notice the three three hills of death here also played out notice that it is the front runner guys you saw you saw the three hills of oh my goodness this pattern shows up everywhere. It doesn't matter where the pattern is. The pattern is the pattern and it's never good right here. And right here, guys, look, just look at it. It is what it is. And then the money flow just started going down. And then eventually, uh, the momentum wave started going down. So just be aware of the patterns, just learn the patterns. You should be good. And what else you can even see a three holes of life here, here, 
and here. And then, of course, it went up. So be aware of patterns. Patterns is ba are basically how people think. And these patterns show up everywhere in life. And you can just go back and find them over and over and over again. Look, one, two, three, three hills of life there. Or just call it inverse head and shoulders if you know it's a bullish term. Did I just do this one? No, I didn't. One, two, three. Kind of a four, but it's going up. Anyways, but not before another drawback. Another three hills of life right here. One, two, three. And of course, one, two, three before it went back up. Uh, yeah, guys, it shows up everywhere. Okay. It shows up everywhere. It is what it is. I don't make the rules for the patterns. That's the Lord's doing. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's look at our boy optimism. We love optimism on this channel. Optimism is way oversold, way oversold. We're at 73 and that's okay. Uh, this is the daily time frames. Things are looking nice. Uh, yep. The money's just kind of choppy just as we expected with Bitcoin. And we can pretty much go ahead and get rid of uh, these little lines here because they don't make any sense anymore. And we'll just go ahead and delete that. And we'll just wait for the next pattern to play out, guys. We will wait for that next pattern to play out. And also, listen, uh, let me know what coins you want to see. Let me know what coins that you want me to cover. I'll be more than happy to give you the best TA around besides like crypto jab, okay? Give you the best TA around. We're looking at an indicator. We, we don't try to do cryptic little stuff. We just tell you what the indicator says. And based off of what the indicator says, which is an algorithm, based off of what's going on on the markets, uh, as far as transactions go, we'll say, all right, cool. We'll do that. And we'll, we'll make a, a good informed decision together. So let me know. Leave it in the comments. That'd be great. All right. And now let's uh, let's keep moving on, guys. Okay, let me actually, um, I need to, hopefully this works here. Hang on. I'm going to minimize my screen here just a little bit just a little bit just so that i can uh see things that are happening uh oh no oh no here we go there we go that should be good that should be good if it's not good i firmly apologize to some degree oh no what's going on with the internet oh man there it goes okay all right guys uh let's move on here and this is Crypt After Dark. My name is Jacob Perry with the Bitcoin 4B, and we do have 412 subscribers, 162 videos, and this is the crypto YouTube channel that you want to come to. We do cover everything from uh, from videos to shorts. I make all of these thumbnails myself. I really do. I enjoy every last bit of it. And uh, here's the one today. Got 36 views. The one just the other day, whenever I had this nice little button up maroon colored shirt, which looks brown on this, uh, I got over a thousand views. That's really nice. Not, not my best uh, short video, but hey, it's still really, really good. So guys, if you like <laughs> my facial hair, guys, if you like the shorts, let me know which cryptocurrencies you want me to cover. And I will do it in shorts and I will upload them to YouTube. Uh, the tickiest of the talks, because you know we are on there as well. And on the X account, which speaking of the X account, guys, if you just click right here, if you're on YouTube, please know that this is recording. Uh, please click on this little button right here and it will take you to this link right here. Or it will take you to this page right here, which is the host Crypt After Dark. Uh, me, Jacob Perry. At Precept Perry, this is where we are. This is what we do everything, okay? If you are watching on YouTube, this is a recording, as you probably already know, and we exclusively live stream on next. And if you are watching right now, guys, okay? If you are watching right now, let's see if anyone's watching. We'll hit. We'll go ahead. We'll hit the refresh button. And let's see, is anyone watching right now? Let's see. Oh, shout out to every nine viewers on here. Thank you very much for watching, okay? Uh, this will take you here. Go ahead and hit that uh, little follow button if you are watching YouTube. Link in the description and in the bio of this channel. And right now, we do have 1,867 followers right now on X. And if you are on X, please go over here to YouTube, Crypt After Dark. That'd be great. Just hit the subscribe button. Let's do this thing full time. We are part time right now, but we want to do this thing full time. We do want to go all in for everything, for every single person who wants to know about crypto, who wants to know about econ uh, economics. Because as you know, on this channel right here, we, you know that we talk about everything. I mean, look at this. Crypto, politics, money, markets. We talk about uh, economics, banks. We talk about conspiracy theories. Like, uh, is the earth flat? Or is the earth round? Is it a globe? We talk about everything. Because as you know, crypto is not in its own little bubble. And neither is anything else. And whatever happens to crypto affects everything. And whatever happens to everything affects crypto. You guys know this because you're smart and you watch this channel. And if you don't know that, if and you, this is your first time tuning in, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. Guys, this is an unhinged show to the core. It is unhinged, okay? Um, I'm not like this in my everyday life, okay? 
because I have to contain myself. I have to go out and be around a bunch of normies. But this, like, letting everything out is what this show is all about. We let everything out. We talk about everything, okay? You see me get mad. You see me get excited. Like, last week, I got really excited that I saw the, the, the cup and handle pattern on Bitcoin. I, like, I just noticed it on Friday, I think. Thursday or Friday. I was super excited. Um, so you see the excitement is all 100% real. You see the anger, all 100% real. You see me being serious and just kind of taking it easy, all 100% real. This is unhinged. I say what I want. And that is the reason, I mean, that is the reason why we exclusively live stream on X. Because I know that Uncle Elon is not just going to cut the wire right to my live stream. Now, you know who will do that? The people over here on YouTube, guaranteed. Those people over there on TikTok, because I think that their president, which is really just a communist dictator, looks like Winnie the Pooh. Came okay, just being real. That guy looks straight up like Winnie the Pooh. Um, you know where we definitely aren't ever, and I mean ever going to be? Facebook. Ever going to be on Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg can, can continue, what? Can continue being Mark Zuckerberg. And his stupid Instagram app. By the way, in case you didn't know, Instagram was the number one deleted app last year. Number one, oh, you, you, were, you were getting a lot of ads on the I.O. game that you were playing and then you deleted and so did like 50 million other people. Yeah, well, you know what? Like more people deleted Instagram more before they even did, deleted that little I.O. game. Okay, I'm just being real. It is what it is. I don't make the rules. I don't tell people that they should not like Instagram. People just don't like Instagram. If you're an Instagram guy, I can guarantee you that you are a um, uh, probably like mid to late 30s, okay? If you're on Instagram, you're probably mid to late thirties or, or you're a woman. Okay. Or you're a woman and women love Instagram, which is weird. Okay. So I, I will firm, I'll stand by that. If you're mid to late thirties, you are still on Instagram. Probably I'm not on Instagram because I don't like Instagram. Okay. I think the algorithm is hundred percent trash. I really do. With just the smallest of like, oh, I looked at that for five seconds. I'm done. Your entire section of searching and for you stuff is completely changed. And so another reason why I don't like like algor algorithmic like things. It's not fun. Just because you look at something for like 10, 20 seconds, you watch one video that's five minutes long. And next thing you know, your entire algorithm is shift. I don't like that. Not, not fun. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the goods. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so there's actually a couple of things that I wanted to read off of this. Uh, this is leading report, whatever you think about them. Uh, I really like them. I like their stuff a lot. This is as of two hours ago. Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry has signed an election integrity bill to require voters to, uh, to provide proof of citizenship with their voter registration application. Guys, let me let, look. There's the reason why I said, like, as a title, are based Patriots winning? Are, are we winning? Like, guys, <laughs> listen, the communists overplay their hand, and so the Patriots stand up. Now, I wish they would have stood up like 15 years ago. That would have been freaking great. But no, they decided to play easy ball because the Republican Party sucks, the Democrat Party sucks, and they all don't like, none of them like us. They all hate us. They want to step on us. And there's only a few good people in politics. And I do mean a few not like 50%, not like 40%. I'm talking like maybe 5 to 1%, okay? Not a lot of people in politics like us, okay? Um, but are we winning, guys? Are we winning? Because this tells me we are winning. Okay, not only this, what else do we have? We have breaking Iowa AG. Okay, so I know, okay, okay, listen, guys. I know I say this state's name weird. I know it. I know it, Iowa. I can't hear it anything different. From what you say, I know a lot of you people say, okay, hang on. Let me, let me, let me try to think about a difference in how you guys say it versus how I say it. And everyone has made fun of me, like fun of me about this for like over 10 years, like probably 15 to 16 years. People have made fun of me for saying Iowa. However, I think you guys say it, Iowa, Iowa, which is weird to me. That doesn't make sense. I think that's how y'all say it, Iowa. That's weird. No, it's Iowa. Okay. I O W A. Boom. Three syllables. Not Iowa. Now, if you are from Iowa and I am saying it wrong, I apologize because I think the way that you say it is probably the same way I say it. That's the way I hear it. 
but I hear like when I say what I say, like I'll, it sounds different than how you say it, if that makes sense. So like if you say Iowa, to me, I hear Iowa. In, it, like if you say it to me, I hear Iowa. But if I say Iowa, it sounds completely different than the way you said it. Completely different. So I say Iowa. So anyways, back to this. Whew. So Iowa, Attorney General Brianna Byrd and Attorney Generals of 23 other states have filed for an amicus brief urging the courts to deny other states uh, other states ha- oh, oh gosh, to deny Jack Smith's request for a gag order against President Trump. Hey, guys, are we winning? Are the base patriots winning? Is Donald Trump about to win? Are we freaking winning? Because it seems like we're winning. I'm, I'm loving it. All right. What else do we have? Breaking. This is five hours ago. Breaking. Kentucky federal judge has issued a preliminary injunction against Biden's radical Title IX overhaul. Super exciting. Now, let's keep moving down here. Oh, my. Mm. Guys, hey, are we winning? I think we're winning. This is good. Breaking. A bill has been introduced to formally name the AR-15 Michigan's official state firearm. Are we winning or are we freaking winning? Hey, mess around and find out, libtards, okay? Mess around and find out. We're winning, okay? We're not playing this game anymore. We're, 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 we're winning so hard. We're winning so hard. We're looking to implement the AR-15 as Michigan's state gun. My gosh, we are winning hard. I, I love this. This makes me so happy. This makes me so happy. Um, And I think, uh, I think that was it for, for this. This is, guys, go ahead. You can, you guys can come over here. You can come over here, look at all this good stuff from leading report. That's really exciting. I really want to share that with you guys. That, guys, look, listen, I think we're winning and we're going to be talking about more stuff later on in the show. Okay. There's definitely more things that we need to be looking at. There's other like things that make me say we're winning. The libs are losing. The communists are losing. They are fighting hard to stay into power. They really are guys. And we're going to be looking at more stuff of why I think that. I think we win, Bitcoin wins, and we're all free from all the dirty, filthy little commies. No one likes a dirty commie. Don't break for the commies, okay? Don't do it. B-R-A-K-E, not B-R-E-K, okay? Oh, that's a little spelling lesson from the dyslexic guy. All right. Whew. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Move, moving back to it. Uh, this is from Dr. Peter St. Ange, PhD on this channel. We do love Dr. Peter St. Ange, PhD. We love this guy. Gold is now the second most popular global currency amongst central bank. I just said amongst. I was like, what am I, British? Ooh, like, get that noise out of my face. Um, so among central banks. So that's really good. Guys, that's really good. Ahead of the euro. So the euro is in third place and just behind the dollar in second. Guys, I'm just wondering where Bitcoin is on the asset balance sheet. Just wondering where Bitcoin is. Because you know... The, the CBDCs, you can't have a CBDC and not have Bitcoin. Maybe you can, but I can guarantee this. Like if you're putting your Bitcoin in a wallet from a CBDC, never good. Um, but for the commies who want to have a, a central bank digital currency, uh, first of all, we already have a central bank. Second of all, the dollar is already a digital currency. Third of all, when it becomes a, a blockchain type thing, it's never going to be good. Your social credit score will rule you and the government will oppress you and you will lick the boot and die trying. I promise you, that's how it goes. Not or die trying, it's and die trying. You will lick the boot and die trying to lick it. Don't be one of those people, okay? Fight back, get a gun. Go to Michigan, get their state gun, as they're trying to do. All right, back to this. Uh, most analysts of de-dollarization assume some other paper money has been uh, or has to dethrone the dollar, but... What if the dollar slayer is right under our nose in gold? Now, this is this is a very real possibility. Um, on this channel, we, we like gold. We like silver. We like anything that makes us money. Okay, we really do. We're not just like crypto only. Okay, if you like stonks, okay, if you're a stonk guy, I'm not a stonk guy. Okay, I don't like stonks. Okay, not a fan of stonks. Um, but what I do like is making money. You want to know why? Because I don't want to be poor. I don't think God's called us to be poor. In fact... I firmly believe God has called Christians to be rich. 
And, and, and this isn't our prosperity, health, wealth, BS, okay? No one's buying that crap. Okay, Actually, a lot of people are buying it. I know one of those people, and I'm not selling it. What I'm saying is, if you are a Christian, this is what you need to do. It's the game plan, okay? It's the game plan if you're a Christian. Um, if you profess Jesus Christ as God and King, you are a Christian, okay? Listen to this game plan. One, get rich. Two, make the money, okay? No, no, wait. One, get rich. Two, buy the land. Three, buy, like, by, by the way, two, buy the land. Not just like an acre. No, no, no. Buy all the land you can get, okay? All of the land you can get. Three, make the laws of the land that you own. Four, kick out all the communists, establish God's rule and law. Four, four plain step. Okay, it'd probably take us like a couple hundred years. Uh, by the way, if, if you don't think that will work, uh, ask yourself, <clears throat> what is Bill Gates doing? What is the Chinese communist doing? Huh? They're buying up the land. Why? Because they're doing that plan. They're looking to kick you out so they can rule and oppress you and make their own law of the land. Now, there we go. That is 100% true, by the way. I, th that playbook that I just came up with for the Christians, I got it right out of the communists. Okay? Literally. Because they're taking over. They're losing now because people are waking up their nonsense. But Christians, this is how we do it. This is how we have a theonomy. This is how we have a Christian nation explicitly like zambia okay explicitly explicitly a christian nationalist nation just like zambia you know the country over there in africa full of black people yeah okay they're move. they're taking their cues and they're moving to christ it's pretty great I'm loving it we should do that and that is our four step plan one get rich two buy up a lot of land and uh, thirdly make the law of the land for uh prosper i guess like whatever anyways guys that's the plan that's that's the plan so i firmly believe god wants us to be rich because we are to um baptize the nations literally but not every single person nope all the nations need to be baptized not every single person all the nations get baptized so if you're not a christian that probably just went way over your head but if you are a christian you know exactly what i'm talking about if you're not a christian bow the knee to jesus before it's too late okay because we are crusading just let you know we are now, moving on. Uh, so, oh, back to this. Oh, we do like gold on this channel. We do like silver. We do like gold. We like anything that makes us money. Why? Because we don't want to be poor. Because the only way that you fight a communist regime is with money and power. And the people that have the power have the money. And the people that have the money have the power. That's how it goes. We make Those who have the money, they, they own the land. They make the law of the land because it's their land. Think about it. That's how it goes. That's literally how it goes, guys. So... If, uh, if the dollar slayer is gold, by all means, buy the yellow metal. Buy the yellow metal. If you like silver, buy the silver metal. If you like Bitcoin, take the orange pill. Do what we all did. Go get Bitcoin. We love Bitcoin. All right. Moving on. This is a raw alerts. Guys, it's such a good show. Oh, I, I told you. Guys, listen. Oh, I told you. Freaking told you. This is, whew, this is so good. Oh, I love this. Before we start talking about this. Guys, I told you, I told you, I told you, I'm a happy man. I am full of joy a lot of times. A lot of times I've been dealing with, like recently I've been dealing with depression, okay? It's, it's been a rough season of life. It has really been rough. But a lot of times I'm full of joy. And I promise you, I will always try to put out the most happiest, greatest thing ever when it comes around. But when things are dark, when things are at their most bottom, that's all we can talk about because that's all there is to talk about. But when we're winning and there are great things to talk about, this is what we talk about. Mm, this is so good. Look at this. This makes me so happy. You, you want to talk about being white pilled to the freaking core? I love this. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee has just approved bill authorization uh, authorizing the death penalty for child best convictions. Let me tell you something. This makes me happy. Yes and amen. Why? Because, let me show you. Oh, I'm so glad I do this. So thankful. I'm so thankful I do this. <laughs> because this book right here, you see this book? The Holy Bible? Oh, here we go. This book right here. The Holy Bible. Right here. ESV. I know you Catholics, you probably don't like it because it doesn't have the deuterocanonical books and they're totally okay. Okay. Um, that book right there says this is the very thing should happen to like those type of people. Literally, it says that. You you take them out, you throw rocks until they uh they stop breathing. This is what happens. I am so on board for this. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because Tennessee Governor Billy has just approved a bill authorizing a biblical justice. That's what you need to read it as. A just justice, not arbitrary, not the government gets to make any rules that it wants to be for a standard of justice. No, a true justice of whom God is the author of and is right here. Death penalty. Yes, capital punishment. That is what you get. That is what you get when you do such a thing like that. Now, uh, here comes the wild part. Well, what if he's a Christian now? Does that matter? Does it matter if, if like if you're a Christian now, but you still unalive someone, which m- most offenses like that, that happens. That happens. Well, he just gets away scot-free because he's a Christian. No, justice, absolute justice happens. And then he and God can go be with each other forever. But I can promise you this. Uh, that doesn't matter. That does not matter at all. Biblical justice is the standard of justice. By the way, if you're not a Christian, I understand. look, we, we rarely get theological on this channel. We talk about everything though, okay? And I'm a Christian. We need a standard of justice. Do you honestly ask yourself this? Do you want a bunch of people who reject God, believe that you came from fish, want natural selection between lions and hippos, humans and humans, and whatever happens to the primates happens to the primates out in the jungle. So it's the same thing with us. Do you want people that believe that, who believe in no morality whatsoever, that all morality is subjective, and that in certain cases like this, that it's okay and beautiful? Do you want those people making the standards and the laws of justice for perpetrators? Because that's exactly what's happening. We have these freak shows out there who are making arbitrary standards for laws and implementing the standards for breaking those laws completely arbitrary. That's what's happening. Or do you want someone who says, I have given you value. I have given you worth. You are made in my image. Do you want someone like that who says, and here's the list of what happens when you go and you hurt someone who is also an image bearer of me, whether you steal whether you commit adultery, whether you murder, whether you do one of these EAs, whatever, or essays, sorry, it doesn't matter. Here's the standard. Do you want arbitrary nonsense from atheists who get all their arbitrary standards from fish that they just kind of made up on their own, by the way, um, or by the way, that's the government that we have now, or do you want an actual standard? You want an actual standard because I'll tell you what, what just happened in Tennessee sided with that actual standard. And that gets me excited. We are winning. (laughs) We are winning. Let me tell you something. If you are an atheist, we are done with your atheist regime. We are D-O-N-E done. All right. Whew, man, I'm so excited. This this is a good show. Uh, I, uh, this fills me with, um, great joy to, uh, see this, by the way, speaking of, oh, by the way, um, this right here, uh, the, uh, a lot of people, especially with uh, those who side with the uh, the arbitrary standards and such, uh, they are highly against uh, the death penalty and capital punishment. Uh, and it is a psyop because, here's why. One, they hate God. Two, the CIA infiltrated the U.S. media organizations and recruited writers and broadcasters to control uh, what we refer to as mainstream media. Guys, this is called Operation Mockingbird. Go ahead, look it up. This happened decades ago. Operation Mockingbird. Literally, the CIA wrote stories, lit, made it up. 100% fiction. Okay? Literally, like you might as well have taken a story from the Twilight Saga, shoved it in a newspaper and broadcast it on the radio and told everybody it was true. And everyone believed it. They just wanted to see the market psychology, guys. They wanted to see what their people would do. And they said, oh, we don't do that anymore. That's a long time ago, guys. That's just a long time ago. Guys, they're still doing it, okay? If you don't think that the CIA is still doing Operation Mockingbird, you have so much trust in the government. You believe your government way too much. You think that the government loves you. Guys, they don't love you. Uh, I I think I told the story uh, sometime last week, but I was talking to a gal at work. And she she said, but why would... um, why would uh, why would the government want to kill everyone? That, that doesn't make sense. Why would they want to kill people? I said, well, one, they hate you. Two, they don't want to kill everyone. They, they they don't want people. They don't want everyone to die. They just want the majority of people to die. And this girl, she was from Taiwan, so she could understand this a little bit. I said, look at what Mao Zedong did. He killed hundreds, like like a hundred million people. Okay, a hundred million people, not hundreds of million, but definitely about a hundred million people. And why? 
just so he could have a little bit of people to control, to oppress, to rule and reign over. The government wants the same thing. She couldn't understand that for the life of her. To her, that, that's a whole new concept. But guys, this, this is 100% true. What's happening right here on, with the CIA, with Operation Mockingbird, going back decades, it's still happening today. Don't trust your government. And this right here is a PSYOP to the core. Speaking of PSYOPs, let's look at this. Um, speaking of another PSYOP, uh, interactive calculator shows how cutting carbon emissions would barely budge temperatures. Okay, let me read this again. Interactive calculators show how cutting carbon emissions would barely budge temperatures. Uh, ever since the start of Joe Biden's presidency, curbing climate change has been a fundamental component of his energy policy agenda. During the, uh, during the spring, for example, the Biden administration, um, hang on real quick. Here we go. Uh, the Biden administration issued a, uh, a power plant rule imposing strict emissions reductions regarding the use of fossil fuels, power plants. Um, there have been many other, there have been many other rulers, rules, sorry, might as well be rulers, rules proposed as well, including regulating cars, stoves, dishwashers, water heaters, and even microwaves, which by the way, microwaves definitely not good for you. I use one all the time, but definitely not good for you. I should say I only use them when I'm looking to like obviously heat up food, but mainly hot dogs. I like hot dogs. Um, all of these rules are predicated on concerns about uh, the effect of the greenhouse gas emission on global temperatures and climate change. If greenhouse gas emissions drive climate change, then curbing the use of source, then curbing the use of sources of energies that emit them, such as coal, oil, and natural gas, should in theory curb these increases in global temperatures. Guys, this is a psyop to the core, and people are buying into it left, right, and center. It's a Stockholm syndrome. This 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 goes way out. Okay, way out. You want to talk about psyops? <clears throat> People were psyoped with the Operation Mockingbird. They believe everything to see on Fox, CNN, and MSNBC, Out Today, America, blah, 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 blah. All the things you see on TV. All the things your boomer parents and boomer grandparents watch. Okay? This is the same thing. This is If you are buying in to the carbon emission, this is a psychological operation. Okay? You are buying into it. <clears throat> Masses amounts of people are buying into it. This is Stockholm Syndrome saying we need to cool the planet off. Ask yourself this, how many crops can grow in the snow compared to how many crops can grow when it's nice and warm? <clears throat> I've said this plenty of times before. There are um, <clears throat> there, there were a great number of vineyards over in Britain, great number of vineyards. And the, because the plant, <clears throat> because the planet has actually cooled off, a large, a large number of those vineyards are now gone. Britain had, used to have great wine, used to have great vineyards and great grapes. And now a lot of them are gone. <clears throat> Why? Because it's so cold there. It can't grow in the snow. It can't grow in cold temperatures, guys. So the warmer temperatures, B Bill Nye, if you're watching this, not that you ever would, because you probably wouldn't watch something this base without losing your mind over 30 seconds ago. Um, if we are on fire, good. We we need fire. Fire is good. Fire puts carbon back in the soil. Fire is good for us. So I'll just let you know. Carbon, really, really good for us. We, especially for the plants, you want CO2 to like, you want the plants to take in the CO2, put out the oxygen so we can breathe it in and get a nice blood flowing oxygen to our brain so we can think clearer, be stronger, be more excited, be more energetic, guys. CO2 is the way to go. It really is. Because the plants take in CO2, they convert it to energy, put it off as oxygen. It's really, 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 really nice. Terraform the planet, okay? So crank that mother. I want to be warm. I don't want to be cold. I can work when it's hot, but I can't work when it's freezing. Just letting you know, my digits don't work. So don't buy into the psyop. Uh, the next thing we need to look at is actually this. <clears throat> this is a child sacrifice then, looks like Aztec Temple, um, down in Mexico or who else knows, down there in Southern America. And now, which is, let's look at this. Ooh, Planned Parenthood. Guys, let me tell you something. I mean, forget forget the picture, okay? Forget the picture. Forget how like Planned Parenthood looks. But this again is a psychological operation. Why? <clears throat> because what what do the elites tell you? What do the Democrats tell you? Okay. Uh, oh my goodness, I can't believe I cannot believe I actually forgot to post this. Um, I'll post it after the show. I saw a van today that says, "Uh, hang on, this this is great." I took a picture of it. And I wanted, to, I wanted to put it on the show. I actually wanted to send it to my wife, but I totally forgot. Uh, let me, hang on. Let me show you guys. This is actually really, really great. I saw a van today that said, 
Inseminate today. Stop population decline. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, stop the population decline. Why? <clears throat> because abortion is a psychological operation. Okay? It's not just because people hate babies. And people do hate babies. Okay? If you haven't seen that, like, okay. A lot of people think that women, oh, they're victims. You know, support the mother. No. These women know what they're doing. They know that they're murdering babies. They really do. The, the, they are, like, evil about it. They are insidious people going out there to Planned Parenthood. They know exactly what they're doing. The clump of cells argument, that was decades ago, okay? We have moved on to, yeah, no, it's a baby. Absolutely. But it's my right to choose. Because when it's your right to choose, who cares if it's a baby or, or if it's a clump of cells? Who, who freaking cares? It doesn't bother me a bit. These people are sick. They're insane. But they are pushed. They are pushed. What? By who? All of the liberals. All of the liberals. I don't know one conservative person who was pro-baby murder through Planned Parenthood called abortion. I don't know one person. And if you say that you're conservative, but you support abortion, you're not a conservative person. Okay? Let's just be real. You may be fiscally conservative, but I know deep down you're a liar. Okay? I know you're a liar about it. You're a rhino. I, I believe that 100%. <clears throat> no baby is conceived in the wrong body. Firmly believe that. Now... Why do I say all that? Because it's a psychological operation. You have Bill Gates, you have George Soros, you have the entire Democrat Party, you have um, you have China, you have all these all of this nonsense pushing depopulation. You, you had China doing it with a one-child policy, that was not good, and then you have abortion. We are looking to depopulate the planet. Bill Gates talks about this publicly, w without being ashamed, without batting an eye, without blushing. And the best way to depopulate a planet is if you start killing off all the offspring. I talk about this all the time. You, you want better GDP? Have more babies. You want to help offset inflation? Have a lot of babies. You, we need babies. We need babies to turn into like grown adults and start working jobs. That's what we need. We need more people into the system, buying more things, cranking the economy. But because we have pushed abortion, because we have pushed depopulation, because we have pushed sterilization, because we have pushed anti-adoption, we have pushed foster homes instead of actual adoption, because we've pushed all of this stuff, especially when Roe v. Wade was overturned, all of the liberals, like none of the conservatives, all of the liberals and none of the conservatives went out and got sterilized because they're being psyoped. They're buying into a, psycho a, a, a psychological operation from the federal government, from the Chicoms, from the cabal, from Bill Gates, from George Soros, from the Clintons, from all of the Democrats, and 90%, 99% of the Republican Party. This is a psychological operation, and it's playing out in front of us. And they want you to think that it's women's right to choose, when really it's depopulation. Wow. Did you think about that? And to prove my point, let's look at this. Let's look at this. This is actually really, really important. We need, we need to look at this. Um, here we go. Uh, let's look at this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that on pause real quick. Uh, live Trump raises alarm over World War III as Elon Musk slams globalist extinctionist cult. I freaking told you. What does extinction mean? It means you abort the population. That's what it means. It is a psychological operation and the normies who are still watching mainstream media, the normies who are just never Trumpers and th th they honestly just can't think they are buying into this hook, line and sinker and all the politicians know it's a farce, but they're getting paid to say it. They're getting power to say it and they don't care. They go to Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein's Island. They do not care. That's just how it is. This is 100% a psychological operation. 100%. Uh, also, before we uh, before we end on this, if, if you're pro-abortion, you really need to consider why they push it so hard. I can guarantee you it's never been about women's rights. Never, not once. Guaranteed. Now let's, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, listen to this really fast. A really, really important. Uh, right here. It's Chucky e. Schumer on Father's Day. issued a post on X that he later withdrew where he's cooking raw hamburger meat with a piece of cheese on it. Look at this. And if you zoom in on the HD, you, you can see it's gray hamburger 
let's uh let's pause it right there okay guys look at this it's 100 percent true oh my goodness guys what in the absolute freaking world so as soon as i saw all um uh, chucky the doll right here because this dude looks psychotic okay you think i'm kidding when i say these people are psychos guys they are literally insane by insane i mean like the joker insane like they're intelligent they're not dumb they are psychotic to the core they know what they're doing that's the thing this guy right here look okay first of all whenever whenever i saw old chucky schumer right here oh wait okay you guys can see me when i saw all the, oh hang on oh no all right hang on i just realized my face is in the way there we go when i saw this nonsense right here when i saw this i was like what the heck like this guy's an idiot and then i got to think of like wait did I see this like a year or two ago with, with this Jezebel right here? Did, did, didn't I just see this Jezebel right here do the exact same stupid thing? You know this lady doesn't know how to cook. She's wearing white while she grills. Everyone who grills know you don't wear white unless you're looking to destroy everything that you just like put on. Because it will leave a stain to the core. Except this lady was actually cooking. You can tell because these things are actually grilled. But you know that she didn't cook it. You know she didn't put those hamburgers on that grill. But you got freaking like chucky the doll over here look at this this is disgusting but how, how are these cooking when this is and who puts the cheese on uncooked meat that's literally not what you do you like how are you supposed to flip it chucky huh chucky the doll how are you supposed to flip this burger hmm how are you supposed to do that bud yeah this actually got a lot of people as uh alex Schoen says it's got a lot of people thinking that these people were actually aliens uh, by the way, speaking of alien, Hey, tell me about this lady's face. Um, but yeah, what, what a wild time. So we are winning and I did want to, I did want to point this out because literally like, Hey guys, who did it better? Uh, this Jezebel over here, the, the Jezebel or Chucky the doll. Cause this dude looks freaky. They both look insane. They both look like they just took a massive dose of adrenochrome and is ready to do it all over again and go to Epstein's Island all over again. Okay. That's what they look like. So who did it better, guys? Who did it better? You tell me. You tell me. So guys, that is it for the day. That's oh, for the night. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you, if you, hey, if you're on the East Coast, I know it's 12 o'clock. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching Crypt After Dark. Um, that's it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Love you guys, and I'll see you at sunrise.